Hello and welcome back to Some Kind of Science. I am Ryan, your science guy. And uh, first I'd like to apologize uh, to those few people who are in fact subscribers. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Um, I lost the video that I was going to uh, show you guys where I was troubleshooting the gray goo that I had found. And I then tried my brand new camera from Christmas and messed up the video for how I handle copper sulfate pentahydrate solutions when I'm done using them. Uh, how I uh, get them to be non-acidic and I get the copper out of them and make them safe to be disposed of. But since I lost both of those videos and with a cold snap coming on, I thought I would uh, give it one more shot and I am going to show you uh, how I make or do the setup for one of my uh, copper crystallization experiments. Now to start, I know that I need to make 700 milliliters of copper sulfate solution. So I just turn this on. It is set to grams. I know you can see it this time. So we'll go ahead and we'll tear that out. I am going to put 700 grams of distilled water, which would be 700 milliliters of distilled water, into this beaker. And yes, this is a beaker that uh, has a handle on it. You could use it as a coffee cup, but um, I don't. Uh, that's a little too much, so I will get some of that out. I have a way. I have a means. It's not really good means, but it is a means. Yoink. Oh my gosh. There we go. That is a uh, pure luck, but really good pure luck. Okay, now that I've got the 700 grams of water, I need to add in 140 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. You're going to have to trust that I've already measured this, but I have. That's exactly 140 grams, which will leave me with a solution that has 20 grams of copper sulfate per uh, 100 grams of water, 100 milliliters of water, which is a solution that is not, uh, not saturated, uh, but is not dilute enough to, to, to not work. Um, and as an added bonus, it's not going to drop out copper sulfate when it gets really cold the next few days. Here we go. There's the water. Close up this thing. Now, let me get you a better shot of what I'm going to do next. In the process of trying to troubleshoot why I was and still continue to get gray goo in my copper sulfate solution, I do have an answer, by the way, it's coming in a subsequent video. I purchased an actual piece of technology. Woo! That is a magnetic stirrer. And I am going to use it instead of myself to stir this thing. Uh, eventually I will get good enough uh, with this whole setup to not need to uh, I don't know, I'll get good enough with this that I don't spend a lot of time doing this kind of uh, late prep work, but that's alright. For this, there you go. Put the copper sulfate 
solution, or will be a solution in there. I drop one magnetic stirring rod in, and I turn it on. And there we go. Let's see if you can get a good view of this. It is stirring. Now it usually takes about five minutes of stirring. So while that stirs, I'm going to show you um, the setup I'm going to be using. I'll turn it a little bit over here. I tend to use a, or I like to use a variety of uh, containers. In this case, I'm using an 8 inch tall glass container. Um, this allows me to put the cathode where the crystals will accumulate up on top and the anode where the copper goes into solution down on the bottom. Uh, to this, I add what will be my anode, that is a large piece of, well not large, it's like a 2 ounce, 3 ounce gram, or a, a piece of pure elemental copper down at the bottom. And then I take a wire that has been molded into an interesting shape in this case. I don't know if you can see how you can see that. Oh, you can see it pretty well. Let's try it again. Come on. I created a, a kind of a chandelier effect. And what I'll be, end up doing is this. So now what I have is the cathode where the crystals will grow is up on top and in the middle. The anode's down on the bottom. And I connect the two wires to these two right here. That is going to be the setup. In the meantime, here is the copper sulfate solution made with 700 milliliters of distilled water and 140 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate. Um, and as you can see, it's not exactly clear solution, which doesn't really surprise me. Um, I expect that I will have uh, an amount of gray goo in the bottom of this one as well. But uh, yeah, we've got a couple more minutes to let this spin. So I'm just going to change the camera angle for you. I can do that so it's a little less crowded on this screen. Give me, uh, give me several more videos and I'll actually be uh, competent amateur at this stuff. Alright, that's got to spin for a couple of minutes and once it's done spinning, um, I will stop the stirrer, take the stir stick out, and allow it to settle on down. The, the, uh, design that I made here for the, uh, copper, um, cathode, that was just something I came up with. Uh, I bought some thick gauge uh, stranded copper wire and just bent it into an interesting shape. The last shape I did was kind of a basket and it made, uh, made a disco ball kind of effect which I thought was kind of nice. Uh, this time I'm hoping for more of a uh, chandelier effect, maybe get, um, get a flower of copper crystals growing at the end of each of these. I really don't know what I'm going to get. That's kind of the fun part. It tends to take two to three months to grow a, a full cluster. You want to grow the crystal slowly as a slow growth uh, allows for more dense, larger crystals. And you want to run it at a very, very low amperage and voltage. I will show you when I set that up.
And it looks like at this point all of the crystals are dissolved and the reason it is not transparent is because there is gray goo. When we talk about gray goo you'll see it in a video fairly soon where I actually explain what I found. So I'm going to turn this off. I've got a magnet here. Just do that. Doesn't matter that I had a little bit of a little more distilled water to it at the end. That is all copper sulfate and distilled water, and at the bottom of that is the gray goo. Now there's probably no more than a gram of gray goo down there. It's very, uh, it, it's made out of nanoparticles. They're, they're so small they will go through a coffee filter without any issue whatsoever. Um, that's something that I learned when I was troubleshooting uh, why I was getting the gray goo. I just want to show you something. What one little gram can do in what ends up being close to 800 milliliters of water, uh, the other 100 milliliters that appears to be there now is the result of the water that was locked up in the copper sulfate pentahydrate uh, when the copper sulfate became copper ions and sulfate ions. So, I'm going to show you this. There's only a gram in there. I'm going here. I'm just going to stir this for a second. You ready? Look at that. That is now going to take two or three hours to settle again. So I probably won't get to do this again until this evening. But. It's a pain in the neck. The gray goo is easy enough now that I know what it is to separate it from the rest of the solution. But it's a real pain because when I make the solution now I have to wait a long time for it to settle out. Um, then I have to do extra work afterwards. I will show you that extra work when I come back. Okay, it's been several hours now, and the gray goo has uh, has precipitated out and is on the bottom of the container now. Let me show you. So, move this carefully. You can see that line there. I will show you uh, in more detail in just a moment. The quickest way to get the uh, solution away from the gray goo is literally just to pour it off carefully, leaving the gray goo on the bottom. And Let me show you. You see that? See how it's kind of milky. That is the gray goo. And this is my good goo-free solution. Now, I literally have to just pour it on in. Get the solution. A little bit low. This is the line that I want to be at. But it's pretty darn close. I'll put the anode in. Let's see, the cathode will come. The cathode will be in the solution at that point, so. I can do that as well.
literally just what it is in the solution. So there is the setup. I'll drag this back a little bit. And let you see the final piece. So over here I have a um, steady voltage, steady amperage source. I hook the anode up. I hook the cathode up. So you can see that when I originally turned this on, it will not actually turn on, it will go into this is what your settings are going to be mode. And we don't want 0.03 amps, that's uh, five or six times higher than we need it to be. So we adjust the amperage, we go all the way down. Five. By setting the amperage that low, it makes the amperage be what it what's constant, and then the voltage will adjust itself in order to meet that amperage requirement. So it says 31 volts now. That's because it's not actually feeding electricity. As soon as I push this button, though, it's at five milliamps and 0 0.17 volts that is 0.16 that is perfect that is just fine that means that over the north course of the next two or three months this is going to grow crystals now i will add a little more solution to that in the future but for now I will probably use this on my next video where I explain what I identified about the gray goo, what the gray goo is, what I plan to do about it. Thank you so much. Again, if you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, if you didn't enjoy it, well, sorry. And you have a great day.